now at this point where they're starting to end school, where they're in the last couple of weeks, you really want to get the buy-in. You really want to be able to say to them and to explain to them that this is the push. I, I like an 11 plus to being a bit like a, a bit like a, a marathon with hurdles at the end. And uh, and I say to my students, I sit them down, I sit them down with their parents. And I say, look, we've been pushing. We have been training for this and we've got to keep that training during summer. And, and I work specifically with, with teens. I, I'm, I'm a guardian um, for, for teens in, in, in top independent schools. I help students to, uh, to make it to, to top independent schools and top state schools. And usually around this time, we are sitting and we are talking about, um, about summer and about what we are going to do. So, um, so hopefully... I've got anybody who's going to be uh, listening to us right now. Uh, so again, just just about me. I, I'm an education expert. Um, I, I'm here in the group to help students who are applying to the most selective schools. So whether that's independent, whether that is grammar, um, I run something called the Education Hotel. It's a tuition agency and Top School and Uni, which is an education consultancy. I myself took the Devon Plus um, for Chelmsford. Uh, County High, and mostly I work with uh, with tweens and teens. So, what do we do if your child is in year five? I start every one of these talks the same way. Really, mental health is most important, and with that, we've got to be really aware. Year five is the time that your child is starting to become independent. They are looking up to you. They are starting to work about, starting to learn about how to handle stress, how to handle a healthy mind and a healthy body. And this summer is going to show them the first point of, of stress because they are preparing for this exam. For many of them, they've been preparing for this for, for a few years and if you are a parent who's decided to do this kind of last minute, uh, maybe just a couple of months ago, then they're on this accelerated path. So one of the big things is really, really looking after mental health. And that means for, for many of my parents and for my advice, it means scheduling in days off and that being non-negotiable. If your child does not get the scores that you are hoping that they're going to get, don't take it away. Please don't, because that's where they learn that the way to deal with stress is just to keep working. And and I know that that's not really what we want to be showing. So um, one of my, my first tips is these non-negotiable days off. And even better if they know, your child knows exactly what's happening. So when it comes to summer, I recommend that there's a big timetable on the fridge or that there is something that allows them to uh, a planner, um, and maybe a little bit more on that, a little bit of a teaser on that in, in a moment, um, but so that they're aware of what's coming, what's coming up. Uh, the other thing is, is communication. I really like getting into the habit of, of communicating with your child about what's been hard this week, what's been a great success this week, and starting at this point in summer to get them to really think about what it's gonna be like going into this exam. So use this time that you're gonna to start to have to look at how to deal with these stresses. So the, the first is is for is to be really open and to be really, um, in advance know exactly what you're doing but also to help them to visualize what might be coming up so one of the things that we do over summer is often we do a visualization so i will talk a child and, and their parents often through the day you know, how's it going to look in terms of 11 plus what's the exam going to look like what's going to happen if you don't get the score that you want to get and all of that to be done in a, in a positive way. So we imagine going into the exam, we imagine doing the exam, we imagine putting our pens down, we imagine walking out and we imagine feeling amazing that it is over. 
and we also work on how far students have come so look back at some of the the topics that you really struggled with at the start your child really struggled with and show them how well they have done how far they have come so that's my kind of overarching before i get into the nitty-gritty um, please do do make sure you have the time to discuss to have conversations with your child to discuss how they look after their health to discuss what you do when you're stressed um, to discuss so that they can start to as they become independent and they start to move on to secondary regardless of where that secondary is they have really positive mental health habits um, so so those, those are my kind of prequels um, now we're looking into planning the summer right and and uh, very shortly and uh, I kind of say this with a bit with a bit of hesitation so I've been told by, by my team to not really say that much, but very shortly um, that there, there will be um, something coming to hopefully help the, those who are in year four uh, a little bit more with planning. But but for those of you that are in year five, um, planning forward and planning forward for me is really useful. I know there's sometimes a question of whether you do it ad hoc, whether you uh, whether you write everything down. I'm a big proponent of being upfront and honest with your child. For me, having, and I say this whenever anyone starts with the education hotel, having a, a three-way relationship between tutor, parent and child is the best way to tackle the 11 plus. And if you're doing it just, just yourself and your child, again, that, that relationship, that idea that, that your child can come to you and say, I've really struggled with this and that they know that you are a team and that you are gonna work it out together, that's something that really helps. So when planning the summer, include your child in it. Now, what this doesn't mean is uh, an argument over when you're gonna work and when you're not gonna work, because ultimately there's a certain amount of work that needs to be done. But what it does mean is them having some choice. So that might be a choice of what afternoons they get off. That might be a choice of if they're going to do a summer club or a summer sport activity, what that might be. Um, it might be a choice of um, they've got a choice to to spend a Saturday with their cousins or they've got a choice to have two uh, two evening, two afternoons off uh, a week and uh, and they choose what happens. So make sure that there is some planning that they feel responsible for because you are more likely to get uh, buy-in. So you're more likely to get somebody who is engaged and less likely to end up with a lot of argument um, later on. And summer can be really intense for, for 11 plus. It can often mean doing quite a lot of practice. It can often mean there's something called the summer slide. So um, you, can, you can have a child who's performing really well is kind of mid 80s who goes into summer and who will hit a dip um and, and many many students do they hit a dip just before um the 11 plus or, or a plateau and you have to really work to to get them back up and to get them scoring sometimes even just what they were scoring at the start of summer um and that is occasionally because they are tired and and that could be because there's been too much work and that they are too tired, but it also can be because of boredom. Uh, and we all know doing 11 plus practice is not sometimes the most interesting. And it also can be because other people are doing more interesting things. So with this planning, do make sure that when you're planning for the summer, you involve your child and your child is aware of what's coming up. Um, it's there. Everyone can see it. Uh, but they're also aware of when they get to have time off, when they get to have fun and what that might look like. So if you're planning, do it together, do it as a team and really start seeing yourselves as, as a team. And, and I, I go through this, this kind of visualisation, as I said, with my students, um, where I explain to them that, that it's a bit like sport in that you are training and your tutor or, or your parent or both are, are a coach 
and uh, we're helping you to be the best on that day and that, that's what we're there for you are there to help your child along and um, and that means communicating it means planning it means uh, making them aware of of your expectations but that that you're aware of what they're hoping to get out of summer as well so two-way planning papers and mocks lots and lots of questions we've had over papers and mocks over the last couple of weeks and i'm afraid i do not have one answer um because it really depends on where your child is at individually so if you are a parent who who really started in year three year four you've been working through you've been building up building up building up and you're thinking okay i've got the summer coming up it's six weeks what do i do then you might be thinking okay my, my child's scoring maybe 80 possibly 85 percent again i deal with super selective schools so most of my students are at that kind of point then we might look at doing kind of a paper practice a week and really timing it and looking at feedback and really working during the week on what's been identified. You might be having done that prep sitting at around a 70 and think, oh no, I'm really needing to, to kind of get up to the mid 80s. Maybe more papers might not be the way forward, but uh, shorter shorter looking at shorter bursts so splitting the paper in half doing it picking out those areas working on those areas and um, and doing those individual things to be able so for example if your child is struggling with timing then really working on how they speed up their math for example that might be something that is a summer target and really make make your child aware okay this is something that we're targeting this summer this week we are going to we're going to target speeding up and this is the goal that we hope to get to typically um for, for the majority of my students when they when they hit summer they'll take probably a paper a week in each topic so that'll be math english verbal nonverbal, um dependent on, on which ones you're doing and they will do one of those a week and then we will over the week look at the areas that need to be built and then we'll, we'll do another one um and what we do is is actually we start at some easier papers and we get harder and harder as we go along uh, and some of those papers might be independent um some of them will be practice papers um and and we will work up so so that's typically how i do it again it, it's my my way that i prepare it's not the way I know many parents will do more than that. Uh, many parents will split papers uh, and some parents won't do practice or won't do papers um, in their entirety until a couple of weeks before. Uh, it's really dependent on your child. If your child is somebody who really panics at papers, I'd start them early because the only way they're going to get over that panic is by doing it and doing it maybe maybe shorten it take the last two pages off celebrate the fact that they finished it reduce the anxiety around it then start adding in think of it as though none of the papers you're doing at this point matter score-wise but what they do matter for is getting your child to the point that they can walk into that 11 plus confident and they can walk in knowing every single piece of technique that they can. And it doesn't matter what they got before. So do use those papers as, an, as a way to improve. Don't just do the paper, look at the score, bin the paper. Because there's no real help for a child that way. Although many students really like to know what score they got, it doesn't help unless you are looking at how to improve so really sit i'd sit down with a child and i'd sit down and i'd go through how they've done it have a look at their working did they finish it in time did they miss out questions why did they miss out these questions was it because they found it tricky too long and use those to to help now mocks are very different 
and we've got in-person mocks we've got online mocks um as i said i I literally just finished um doing an assessment our assessments are, are a little bit different to mocks but um mock exams can be very useful they can be really useful for a child who is worried about the the practicalities and indeed a parent who is worried about the practicalities of 11 plus because an in-person mock allows you to go it allows you to sit the exam in a place with other students allows you to have to pack your pencil case before you go and run through those motions and that can be that can be very helpful for a child who's worried about the, the physicality of taking it um, they can be useful in terms of giving a giving a feedback that you might not see at home and again drawing from kind of personal experience i i often do assessments and they're one-to-one -one, so that they're, they're not really the same as as a mock exam but a parent will often say well you could do that with me um but the moment you put a child under a, a stressful environment maybe they're taking it with other people you can hear everyone else going through the exam and it sounds like everyone's doing it much quicker than you and it sounds like maybe everyone else knows what they're doing um that can really that can really test a student so being able to do it alongside others you might find that there are areas where people are a little bit wobbly um so for example maybe they're not so great at time questions um but usually when they sit with you the timetable style questions are fine but actually you put them under the pressure of exam and uh, and that's what comes up so those mocks can be really useful for that reason to to put that pressure on to get them used to the idea of what it would be like where i would put a little warning would be just mock after mock after mock and, and not necessarily with any goal in mind again it's kind of a theme that that runs through summer is being really purposeful about why you are doing something so if you're going to a mock you and your child know why it's happening it's not just to see where you are um or to to see what the score is it it's in order to target these areas or it is to get you used to the idea of doing that mock. If there is a goal in mind, then mocks can be really useful. Um, often around this time, I, I tell the story of a student who I had a couple of years ago, um, who did, I think in the end, eight mocks, every single one of them. Um, he, he started off not very confident and he ended up not very confident. Um, and it was something that, that wasn't particularly my advice, but, but parents really wanted him to go through that, that process, um, to see how his scores were doing. And unfortunately, because there wasn't any, um, there wasn't any kind of reason behind it, what it ended up doing was instead of building confidence, it, it ended up, um, it ended up dampening confidence. So do make sure that your child is, is aware of why they're doing this. It's not just, I'm doing another mock. Oh, it's another one. Oh, it's another one. Because when it gets to the real thing, it will just be like another mock. Um, so do make sure that they know the reason behind. And the other thing is, obviously, different mocks give back different data. So one certain ones might just give you a score. Uh, they might give you a score compared to other students who did it on the day. They might give you the worked questions. They might give you the questions that your child got wrong. Um, do take a look because they're, they're quite different. They can they can be quite um, quite different dependent on who is running them. Um, I suppose for just as a, a kind of a for 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 me the the most important thing for me would be to see the questions that my child got wrong um because then i can tell kind of what we need to work on but for other parents i know that uh, that knowing the ranking or that knowing all of the questions to see whether they use the right method um can also be uh, really useful so hopefully that that helps with papers and mocks as i said typically for me it's a it's one a one a week um but but there are people who do do many more um 
as long as you are using them and you are going back over them, then that is is the kind of most important thing. As you start to get to the end of summer, do consider bringing all of the questions that your child has struggled with on all of their past papers through the summer and bringing them into one paper or two or several, uh, maybe mixing them in with a couple of other questions. And the reason to do that is, is twofold. The first is to see whether they now are able to do those questions. Hopefully they are. You've worked on them over summer. The second is to show them. So I would always be keeping all of those papers. And then once I've made that amalgamated paper, they've sat it. Maybe they get 70 percent. You show them, OK, you know what? I wouldn't tell them before, but I would tell them afterwards. Those those questions were all the questions that you've got wrong. And look how well you've done, because it's a real confidence boost to see that you have not been able to answer them at the start of summer. And suddenly here you are, you're scoring 70 percent or you're scoring 65 percent. So as it gets to the end of summer, really focusing on confidence. You want your child to be walking into the 11 plus, not feeling like it's another mock, not feeling like they can't do it and uh, and feeling really, really confident about themselves. So that would be how I'd be using mocks. That would be how I'd be trying to get the most out of them, both in feedback, but also in confidence. Summer courses. Obviously, I can't come on here without talking about summer courses. Uh, the Education Hotel is running them. Um, so it, it, would, uh, it would be a bit weird to, to miss them out. Again, for for us, um, summer courses is something that we have decided to do this year. Um, and the, the reasons behind it are, again, it's about targeting those specific areas. As opposed to choosing to do something that runs through everything or that includes both year four and year five, we've chosen to do something that is very specific to year five and very specific to the trickiest topics that we can identify and that parents can identify. But generally, if you're looking at summer courses, consider what your child will get out of it. So are you sending them there for an overall recap? And you think, actually, there's some things that they haven't done since year four, and I'd really like them to go through, in which case, then uh, then maybe a longer, um, a longer, more spread out course that, that covers everything might be the way forward. Um, if you're wanting to tackle specific subjects or specific topics that have been identified as tricky, then there may be a shorter, more intensive course. Um, consider if there is a specific area, you know, if you want to do just math and you think maybe that's the area that they might need and, and do balance it up against that spare time. Because if you're going to be doing five weeks worth of summer courses, and uh, that means they're going to be working two, three hours every single day in the week. And then you're doing mock exams or past papers. When are they going to have that time to, to relax, that time to feel like there is summer? Or are they going to reach the end of August and they're going to be tired and might not be in an ideal condition to, to go in? So when choosing a summer course, that there are lots of things that that you might want to consider you might want to see well is it important for you to have them in person is it important that actually it's online you'd have to do any drop off you can go on do your do what you want um, afterwards or do you want them to be in a classroom with other other children and uh and interacting with them do you want that summer course to build their confidence or do you want that summer course to be long or short uh, but but make sure there is a goal in in mind and again just like i said at the start that it's communicated with your child that it's planned in advance um that you've got that up on the on the fridge or on the wall just uh telling you about what you know why you're doing it and, and one of the nicest things that i like to do right at the start of summer i say to parents is kind of imagine that you're you two you're a team and and if you're with a tutor, the tutor's part of the team too. And come up with a motto, a chant, a thing that, that's going to uh, to bind you guys together. And 
really aim for it. So just like when you're on summer camp or when you are on a sports team, you've got your own sayings, you've got your own preparations. And that's something that you want to start doing as, as you're going through these mocks and your papers is, is really building that in so that when it gets to the, the day, uh, the day of those exams, you can say, oh, days if you're taking multiple, you can have them prepared. They know their motto. They know that they can do it. They've been through it. They've tried it. They've been to these summer courses. They know that they've done the best and you know that they've done the best preparation that they can. So that's why I'd always be pro plan. And I'm also pro uh, pro courses or pro pro mocks as long as there isn't there's an aid there's a reason this is probably the hardest how to maintain motivation because imagine that you had a month's worth of holiday booked from work you know, and you did it every single year every single year you got a month's worth of holiday and then somebody came to you and said actually no not this year no, this year you're going to sit in the office and you're going to work and you can look out the window and you can see all of the other adults and they're all going off on vacation they're doing it every year but you aren't and the reason for that is that you then have to take a test doesn't seem particularly fair because your child although they really may want to go to this specific school it's it's a hard thing to do to maintain that motivation for a whole summer when you can see other people people who maybe aren't aiming for that same school people who maybe aren't the same age as you but they're out there having fun and you're stuck inside working one of the big things on maintaining motivation teamwork um, as i've mentioned before and being aware of what you need to do um so that's why i'd always sit down and have that conversation that's why i'm coming on live now before we reach the end of school time um it, and before we reach summer so that as a parent you've had a time to listen to this and you are um you are aware of, of kind of what might what you might want to do when you sit down with your child and, and discuss summer um the other is is knowing that you've got those times off and they're protected it doesn't matter what happens in the week it doesn't matter if you know you, you can't remember all the spellings or whatever you are going to have that time off because that is one of the ways to maintain motivation the other way is and again maybe a, a controversial it's not controversial it's the way that I suppose I, I uh, present, I, I say to my students, look, yeah, you've got to work over summer. Yeah, so is everybody else who's doing 11 plus. And yes, it's going to be tough. And I have that conversation with them right at the start. And I get that buy-in from them. I talk a lot about buy-in. And what I mean is when a child um, or a student of mine will agree with me and will do what i'm asking and yeah there'll be pushback um but they know the reason that they're doing it so if you haven't taught schools and you get the chance to do so do it um if you haven't taught and you don't get the chance to do so then make sure that they are that, that they've watched the open days that they've watched the talks that they want to attend the school that that they um, that that you've chosen, um, and that might be might be one reason. It might be because the art classrooms are particularly good, or because they play cricket and your child wants to play cricket. But make sure that they've got a motivation, and then print out that motivation picture, stick it up inside their workspace, and every time because there will be times during summer that they don't want to do the work, that they just want to go outside or that they just want to do something. And there might be tears. Remind them of the reason that they're doing it. That reason has to be intrinsic to them. So 
if your child has has been pushing back against doing the 11 plus maybe they don't want to go to the school they may want to go with their friends to a different school or they're not too worried um i would find something that that they want to do so do they want to go there because there is something good or because they've seen the open day or that because the school's got a swimming pool it's the reason that i wanted to go to to chance of grammar was i i went around and there was a swimming pool it was that thing that sw swung it for me um if not i would find some other motivation so whether that is that that taking the exam means that um upon taking the exam that they get to go out to their favorite restaurant that uh, that they get a new xbox game whatever it is now would be the time that i'd start talking about that and i'd really start talking about motivation because uh, that motivation can be a useful way to get you guys back on track and again you're a team so you are both working for the same thing um don't ever hold it over them so if you don't try, you won't get this because you, you guys need to be on the same team. So um, whenever I, I discuss this with parents and, and there are parents who, will, you know, who, who will promise their child uh, something at the end of it. Um, I, I would always say that it, it's for doing the exam. It's not for scoring. It is. There we are. Um, but be aware that uh, that you are on the same team. Okay. Oh, I think I am back. There we are. All right. Where should I be now? What if I started preparation late? Ultimately, end of summer year five, you should have finished, for me, all, all of the syllabus. Um, Ideally, you have done some practice questions that you have looked through exam technique, that there is nothing new. That was would be for me ideal. And uh, and if you started preparation late, working towards that. I take students on at this point who have not considered 11 plus. It's possible. It's intense. It's not ideal, but it is possible. So occasionally there are people who say, you know what, we've moved to a different area. We actually now think we want to do it. You've got six weeks and you need to cover the advanced stuff. So the stuff that, that would have been done at the end of year five, start of year six. Um, but ideally, if you are at the point where you have covered the whole syllabus and, uh, and, and the, that syllabus can be, it's often available from tutors. Um, if you've covered all of it, You've done a load of 10 minute tests. You might have done some practice tests, started on those practice tests, uh, that your child is aware of where their pitfalls lie. So are they going too fast? Are they going too slow? Do they struggle when it gets to pie chart questions? Um, so they know, or you know where those areas are um, and you know where you need to focus. That would be over the next couple of weeks whilst your child's still in school, uh, what I would be sitting down and working out. So to do that, I'd go through any books that they've been doing, any online prep that they've been doing, ask their tutors, where do they need to focus? So is there anything that's syllabus related that needs to be covered? And there might be, there might be stuff that's really old, so like fractions, that they've forgotten. It might be that actually over the last two weeks, they've been really tired with everything that's been going on at school and a lot of schools are moving towards the fun part um and actually they, they're just exhausted and, and their scores have just started to drop so you know that summer needs to be that point where you start pushing again um it might be that they're doing really really well but they're struggling with inferencing comprehension so pinpoint those areas so that when you and your child sit down you say, these are the areas that we're struggling on. 
these are the, the things that we're thinking of doing. And then you give them some options. It doesn't have to be options on what they focus on. It can be options on when they work. It could be options on when they take the lunch. It could be options on what they do in the afternoons. Do they want to work mornings or afternoons? So again, a little bit of flexibility, but ultimately as a parent um, or a parent and a tutor team, make sure you know where you're aiming and make sure that you've got that focus. So where should you be now? Um, for me, uh, you, should, uh, you should have finished the syllabus, but if you haven't, you should be aware of what you need to be doing. I can see that, that some people have asked, so how many hours per day do we allocate on study days? Ultimately, that is dependent on how much you need to be doing. So if you have covered everything and actually you're looking at practice, then one to two hours is, is typically what I'll look at. If I'm looking at an intensive student, someone who's decided to take it now, I'm running five to six hour days. So there's a big spectrum. Um, the other thing is whether you're going to take a day off in the middle or are you going to do something in the afternoon or are you working weekends or not working weekends? Um, so, so typically the, the way that I'd run it, um, kind of two hours is, is average, I suppose, for, for me. And that's because if a student for me is taking four different things, then we do 30 minutes on each. So we do 30 minutes math, 30 minutes English, 30 minutes non, 30 minutes verbal. And uh, and we, we set those times up. And I might not do it all in one block. I might spread it out. Um, I might say, OK, I notice after the first week that um, that maybe verbal reasoning needs a little bit more. And, um, and actually, my child's really struggling with vocab. Then what I might do is sit down and um, work out a way to get vocab elsewhere in the day so whether that's through a game whether that's through playing board games whether that's through a car journey and uh, and I'd look at it that way alternatively some people prepare three hours I like three hours because it goes from nine till twelve um, if we're not we're not doing breaks but um, kind of maybe a bit more intensive um, or indeed nine till one and then you take breaks um, and that third hour is exam technique. So you're practicing a lot of what you've recapped on. But it really depends on how much your child has done where they're aiming for and what they're scoring. So if you're aiming for QE Barnet and your child is scoring mid 60s, you, you've got a way to go. If you are not aiming for a particularly selective school and your child is scoring straight 80s, and they've got a tendency to maybe be bored or be burnt out, then that's where you need to pull back. So highly school dependent, highly child dependent, unfortunately. Um, but do prepare to be flexible. I know I talk a lot about planning, um, but one of the things that, um, that I would say is plan to sit down with your child, maybe on a Friday, have that what's gone well, maybe tea and cake, always a good one because uh, you get something nice out of it and uh, and discuss what you think needs to happen what they think needs to happen or indeed what the tutor thinks needs to happen and that means that then you can be flexible week on week so if you've noticed something you might say okay well I'd like us to focus a lot more on English you know I, I really feel and I'd always put it positively instead of your scoring low it would be i really feel like you can do better i know that you can i should look at this piece that you've done for me two months ago that was amazing let's see if we can get there we can get there instead of just them we we've got to work together and i know we can do it and that's why we're going to be doing some more english this week and make sure that there's a goal so that you've got that again relationship that you, you know both of you where you're going OK, I appreciate um, that uh, that there might be some of you who are watching this either either live or, or indeed um, on, uh, on on catch up who are in summer year four and uh, you're thinking, OK, well, this is great, but I haven't I, I don't know what I'm doing with my child. My child's in year four. What do I need to be doing? Um, 
for for me at year four it's about again it's about planning um and uh and knowing exactly what you're going to be doing going into year five and again it's, it's quite hard to want, run one of these talks because every person's uh, circumstance is different. So you might know, you're in summer year four, that you plan to have a holiday in, in year five. And year five is this, this counts for you too. If you're planning to have a holiday, you're going to have to increase the amount of work either side. I am a, a preferer. My 11 plus tutor told me don't do holidays in August because you take your eye off the ball. Again, it's a bit like training. You need to then kind of get back to it. But you might always have a holiday then. So you might know, actually, there's something that's unavoidable. Maybe you go and see your family back home. Then you, you need to plan around it. If you're in year four and you know that your child is looking to play higher level sport next year, you know that what you need to be planning around so if you're in year four summer is an ideal time for you to review your child's commitments and, and start to see where is it that um that you you need to move stuff around um and, and again look at how much of the syllabus they have covered so again at a year four I would hope that they are typically around three quarters, maybe slightly more through the syllabus. It puts very little pressure then on year five. At uh, year five, there's only around a quarter to do or, or even just 20 percent. Um, it, it can can be a bit a bit nicer. You can start to look at exam technique. So if you're sitting here, you're, you're looking at this uh, this talk and you're thinking, OK, I'm year four. But maybe only my child has, has only just decided to do the 11 plus. I would then maybe start using the summer and, and do occasional days, two, maybe three days a week, working at increasing that syllabus so that you can go into year five. You can go in ahead. I like my students to have finished everything by Christmas um, in year five. And that gives them a lot of time for exam technique, because typically Timing is where a lot of students fall down. Um, I know that I finish earlier than most. Most people won't finish until Easter. Um, and typically what we do is we finish at Christmas and then we go back over anything that we've identified needs looking at until Easter. Um, so do have a think about planning ahead, about what your child might need to be doing, both inside school and outside of school. So is there anything that's taking a lot of time that they need to be aware of their any sports uh, and start to do that planning. The same thing for year five. If you're in a year five um, and you, again, you're, you're looking forward until summer, and you're thinking, you know what, well, I, I, I've got other children and uh, we always go on holiday and the green list countries. And, and maybe you're thinking of going. Again, that is where having a clear plan will help your child. So if you are going on a week's worth of holiday and you're not thinking of bringing the books with you, you think you're leaving them at home and that week is going to be off, then make sure your child is aware of what needs to happen around it. So again, not holding it over their heads. So not saying to them that they won't be able to do things if they don't get it done, but making them aware that they need to again like preparing for a race you've got to be able to get back into it and uh and typically it, it take it takes it takes quite a while so a week two weeks to get back into the swing of doing that 11 plus prep so um and and that's why you need to be able to come back and get back into the swing of that and, and your child needs to be aware so that's that planning part that communication part um being able to say to them actually we're, we're taking holiday so instead of taking the three hours a day that we're going to do when we get back it's going to be three very intensive hours a day and we're going to do it every single day um and we're going to do that just because we're going on holiday or we're going we're going on holiday 
So we've got a month when we get back. What we're going to do is we're going to work for four or five days a week and we're going to do that until until we both feel like we're confident okay so always again as a team right. balance if you're in year four you probably just sat through all of the year five stuff that i've been saying um about how important it is to to keep a child on track and make sure that they don't peak too early because that does happen um that they don't burn out so summer year four make sure that balance is right i wouldn't be doing intensive work at all um i would be focusing on making sure that those foundations are nice and strong make sure that they have covered what they need to especially this year um and really balance so again it, it's early it's early for, for for these guys they don't need to be doing all of this preparation as far as i'm concerned anyway um they do need to be doing regular work because we all know that if you don't practice math it doesn't work um you forget things uh, but likewise you don't need to be sitting down and doing mock tests and uh and, and putting them through that kind of pressure unless of course your child you know needs it and there might be there'll be very few but there might be a few children who really want to push themselves um who would like to to see what it's like and uh and occasionally i do have those those students who do do that uh, maybe a little bit earlier but ultimately you are you're kind of putting them under that stress for for not necessarily any particular purpose so again balance if they really want to do something academic get them doing math challenge get them writing poetry get them writing creative stories and writing their own stories and creating their own book get them vlogging get them doing something that is going to build their skills that's something that's going to help them with 11 plus but but ultimately something that isn't taking exams um because they've got enough time to do that in year five all right so i'm coming to the end of uh, of 